we're now going to have to put together the two mathematical concepts that we just learned about. <clears throat> First we learned about marginals, then we learned about averages. So I'm going to use the same graph that I had before of hours spent studying for an exam on the horizontal axis and exam score on the vertical axis to show how you can put marginals on the same graph as averages and compare them. <clears throat> if you're wondering why we're we doing all this, we're going to have to do this constantly in the middle part of the course when we study the theory of the firm and we have cost curves. We'll have total cost, marginal cost, average variable cost, average fixed cost, a whole bunch of different concepts. And so we'll be often going from totals to marginals and, uh, and vice versa. I'll get to the vice versa part later. In order to make things clearer, I'm going to start using it. Uh, I already used oranges for average, and I'm going to stick with that. And I'm going to start drawing tangent lines and the corresponding values for the slopes for the marginal in blue. <coughs> so my goal is to draw the uh, is to calculate the, the the slope of the line in the upper graph find the marginal uh, exam score and then um, <clears throat> graph it. Now it turns out there is a way to do this analytically. I'll talk about that briefly but the main way we want to do it is graphically. So analytically Analytically, when you go well, from zero hours spent studying for an exam to two, the exam score you get goes from 50 to 70. Remember the marginal is delta y over delta x. In other words, it's the change in exam score divided by the change in hours spent studying. So between 0 and 2, the change in exam score is the difference between 70 and 50. And the difference in hours spent studying is the difference between 2 and 0. So you get 20 over 2, which is a marginal payoff of 10. That's between 0 and 2 hours. Between 2 and 4 hours, the change in exam score is 90 minus 70. The change in hours spent studying is 4 minus 2. And so you have 20 over 2 which is also 10. Now actually I made a mistake a little bit earlier. I, when I was calculating the marginal when we went between 0 and 2 hours I said 70 minus 50. It's actually it should be 70 minus 40. And 70 minus 40 is 30 so instead of, instead of 10 that should be 15. that. Okay. All right, then finally, when you go from four to six hours, this change, the change in exam score is the difference between 100 and 90. The change in hours studying is 6, the difference between 6 and 4 is 10 over 2, which is 5. So those would be our three marginal numbers, 15, 10, and 5. But we need a graphical interpretation. We'll actually be able to get 
four of them. So we're going to draw tangent lines. So now you remember how you draw tangent lines. You don't do what I say in the lower right hand corner of the screen here, which is to draw lines from the origin of the function. We don't do that. Those are the orange lines. The blue lines are tangent lines. So let's let's do that. First tangent line looks like this. Next one, let's say about uh, here. Second one is really close to the first. Not exactly the same. And then the last one, well, the last one is quite it's 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 basically horizontal. Um, in fact, it, it 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 would be horizontal if everything was smooth. Okay, so <clears throat> if we compare these three. It's a little hard to see the difference between the, the second and the third, but the first is, is definitely the steepest, and then the second and third are flatter, and then the last one is totally flat. So that's clear. Now let's compare the average with the marginal, and let's go to zero hours spent studying. So with zero hours spent studying, the orange line is completely vertical. The blue line from here to here is clearly not vertical. It's positive, but it's not nearly infinity. And so the marginal is going to be less than the average. So at zero, now uh, I'm not actually going to take any numbers here. I could draw triangles like this and then use a ruler or take other kind of measurements since I have a numerical scale to see what the slope is, but instead I'm going to kind of uh, play it by ear and say that the slope here is uh, is less than the less than the average. Let's compare it to the other orange lines and it looks like it's about the same slope as the orange line corresponding to uh, four hours spent studying. So oh, I'm going to put a, a blue dot around here. Again, what we know is that the blue dot at zero is less than the orange level at zero, because the orange level of zero is infinity. Now, how about the second and third blue lines? Well, the second and third blue lines, their, their slopes are fairly close. Um, this, the second one actually has a, the one that for our spent study goes four is actually flatter. Compared to their corresponding orange lines, for example, around here, the orange line is definitely steeper. There's there's no question about that. Which means that the blue line is flatter. And the blue line is also flatter than the blue line at... In other words, the blue line at, at 2, the tangent line at 2, is definitely flatter than the tangent line at 0. So the tangent line at 0 generated this point. So the tangent line at 2 is going to have to be below that blue point and also below the corresponding orange point, so something like this. The tangent line at 4 is going to be almost the same as the tangent line at 2. So the tangent line at 2 generates this, and the tangent line at 4 is going to be almost the same, but just a tiny bit less. And then the tangent line at 6 is 0, way less than the corresponding orange line. Then connect the dots. And you got the marginal. So this represents the marginal points per hour. It is legitimate to put it on the same graph as the average points per hour because the vertical axis is just the units are points per hour. And so that's the same. And 
certainly marginal average are different at, at, at six hours spent studying the marginal is zero but you still got a pretty big uh, pretty big average so when you think about the interpretation there the marginal payoff at six is zero but the average payoff is still uh, very very positive we're going to be doing a lot of these graphs where we take the function and figure out the, the average and marginal and then sketch it